tonight we are featuring the lovely Zipporah Camille Thompson. Zipporah is this year's 2021-22 Working Artist Project Fellow. MOCA-GA's Working Artist Project is an awards program to support established visual artists of merit who reside in the metropolitan Atlanta area. This initiative provides an unparalleled level of support for individual artists, expands the museum's mission, and promotes Atlanta as a city where artists can live, work, and thrive. This program is supported by grants from the Charles Lordens Foundation, the Antinori Foundation, with additional funding from the National Endowment for the Arts. Zipporah is a ceramist, weaver, sculptor, and activist based in Atlanta, Georgia. A native Carolinian, Thompson explores alchemical transformations through clay textiles, examining marginalized bodies, and eliciting social change through her work. She received her MFA from the University of Georgia and her BFA from the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Her work has been featured in numerous publications and shown in spaces nationally and internationally. Thank you so much, and here's Pora. Oh my gosh, I hate mics, but thank you guys so much. Uh, um, the, so this show is called The Ocean Web Rainbows, and it really is so much of everything I've been personally experiencing, as well as like, um, I don't know, like just literally everything I feel like I've been thinking about and pondering about and uh, considering over the past few, I would say months. Um, I always get something like the summer blues and people are like, how do you get the summer blues when we're supposed to be happy during the summer? But I always get the summer blues every, every single year. Um, I don't like the heat, I don't like the, you know, especially in Georgia, but I just hate the heat, I don't like hot weather, I don't like the sun, I don't like things that people are like, what is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> but I really love like fog and like mild, um, kind of like calm weather, I really love like cold weather, I love um, just mild temperature, and so the summer's really, really hard for me, especially here in Georgia. Um, I'm from North Carolina, so it shouldn't be that much of a surprise in the heat here, but it just is, it still is. Um, there's so much humidity here. And I really do think that the weather has such an impact on me. I feel like I identify as an empath and just like everything takes such its toll on me that I feel like that can't help but translate into the work. And gosh, like the ability that I, I have to like create or not create in certain moments. So I feel like I have to really respond to where I'm at and where everything else is at to be able to do what I do. Um, kind of as silly as that sounds. <laughs> but I really, for this show, you know, I obsess and I obsess and that's kind of the nature of what I do is I think so, many, so much about tiny little moments and I always want to be the artist that does these giant gestures and like these big things and like that's just not who I am and I, so I feel like I'm faced with like this intimacy and how do you reckon with that? How do you reckon with intimacy as kind of memory and intimacy as just everyday experience and intimacy as just like this idea of like the personal but personal things we can all kind of connect to and that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I think that for me, it's about every single knot that's made in the piece and every single thought that comes with every single knot and how not only personally I'm reckoning with perhaps things that are very personal to me, whether it be a loss of a loved one or whether it be, you know, the weather. <laughs> I don't know why I'm fire and so hot. Or whether it be, you know, trying to figure out work-life balance with, you know, as an artist, how do you live, how do you create, how do you function, how do you pay the bills, how do you do all these things that we have to do every single day as creators, as makers. 
Um, and so I think that's kind of what you're saying here is really just be reckoning with personal things, but also um, kind of collective things as well. Um, so many of my materials have so much, like I love to consider materials and um, what is my attraction to certain things, but also what do most people think of when they think of ribbons or when they think of like utility belts or when they think of buckles or something like that. Like, are they thinking about themselves on a plane and they're like, oh, look, I wear a body. Or are they thinking of like, what are they thinking of? And so I love considering that for other people, um, but I also love considering like, what all those things bring to me and what they bring up for me as a way to process those things, but also just to consider. So it's like this considering, this thinking, and this reflecting about maybe things that have happened, but things that maybe will happen. Um, and that's kind of where the work is right now. I think there's so much personal memory in every single piece that I'm okay with my audience, like, I don't really get if that was about your second great loss, loss, cousin, or whatever. Um, I'm okay with that, you know? I'm okay with if you don't know the full story of, for example, like this is devoted to my maternal grandmother here. Like, I'm okay that that might not come through, as long as what comes through is that there's this fire, and there's this desire, and there's this, yearning for um, and celebration despite like making do and embracing what kind of is readily available. So that's kind of where the work is right now is really just thinking about all those things. Um, chains, you know, do those reference labor? Do the, the nets, do those also reference labor? And like needing to bring in sustenance, needing to bring in provision for either oneself or one's family. Um, I love think I just like sit for a long periods of time thinking about materials and thinking about copper, for example, and its healing properties and it's kind of like antifungal, antibacterial, anti this and anti that and like what are you really anti and I love thinking about um, I actually work with kids who have learning challenges, and so we do so much um, work with thinking about the roots of words, and I love that, like I love that so much, thinking about the root of a word, but also the root of a material, and how does that translate, how does that, how do we embrace that in our everyday lives without even kind of like stopping to think of it as we're embracing it? Um, and so I think that's where a lot of the works are at, um, is really just considering the thing or the things very bare bones essence and like what those meanings imbue. Um, like for this piece, for example, I like think about the safety or the utility buckles. Um, you know, are you buckling yourself in? Or kind of bracing and like preparing for the fall. And so I think a lot about that, or like the chain, and like are you chained to something, or are you like chained and about to break away from something? Or like there's a lot of, um, I like to really ask people around me, like, there's any materials that you see, or on the side of the road, or wherever. And they're just disposed. I love those kind of things. Like things that are literally just gonna, they're just gonna sit in a landfill. Um, and so there was this like, there were these beautiful banners um, at the school that I teach at, um, hanging across for celebration at school. Um, and that sort of thing is like, that's just gonna end up in a trash can. Nobody's gonna want that or it's been hanging for a while. So yeah, I would love to ask and see if I can get in the hands on some sort of material like that. And then what does that mean to then imbue this textile 
with those little flags, those pennant flags, that were once like a sign of celebration, and then now it's like a sign of mourning. Or are, is it a sign of mourning? Um, especially when it's the colors that like I'll specifically select. And I'm very much so into color symbolism and thinking about colors as kind of imbuing meaning into the work. Um, I'm really excited about um, the Theosophists, if anybody's familiar with them, and thinking about um, color as meaning and color as just so much, like, it's in and of itself so much material um, and so much opportunity. And I've been doing these works a lot where, like, something's really fiery and it's, like, really, like, are you setting free or are you setting yourself in bondage? I don't know, but that's happening. And I really love sci-fi, if you can tell. <laughs> um, but uh, just like creating all these narratives, I think that's so much into the work and like what happens in my head um, and what happens with what like just naturally I gravitate towards with sci-fi and fantasy and that sort of thing. Um, but just also all of that having some sort of roots or like basis or like foundation in the everyday, right? Um, so that it doesn't have to be this other thing that's so wild. But it can also be that this is one of my grandmothers, you know, like this is the, if I were to take my grandmother and her life story and put it into materials, this would be her one, like my maternal grandmother, not the others, because theirs would look vastly different. But if I was going to take that grandmother and put her into material, this is what it would be. And so that, those are the kind of thoughts that I have when I'm making the work. Um, I'm really embracing a lot of craft tradition. I'm thinking so much about um, kind of Southern craft tradition and um, how it lends itself towards like ritual and repetition. Um, there's that little square with the next little square with the next square. And as I'm working, I'm constantly thinking about these different memories um, that either happen with that particular grandmother, or like, what does it mean for most people to connect with their grandmother? Like, do people have even a connection with their grandparents these days? Like, I don't know. Um, I'm also thinking about trauma. I'm also thinking about process, processing trauma. I'm also thinking about connections to land and landscape. And, what that means to black and brown bodies, what that means to it, literally anybody right now when the planet's falling apart. So I'm like thinking about all these things as every single stitch is being made and it's just kind of my way of processing personal things, but also kind of collectively and considering other people. And, uh, oh, I wonder if they're processing this in this way too. Um, so that's kind of where that piece is. Um, the tire pieces, I've been using tires for a while. Um, I'm really excited about these tire pieces specifically. Um, I'm thinking so much about landscape and so much about my grandmother, the same maternal grandmother, who is quite fiery, as this piece would indicate. Um, she's super, super spicy. She cooked really well. Um, she could bake really well. But boy, don't cross her, because you would definitely feel that wrap. So that wrap is there in that piece. Um, but anyways, I love her. I love her. Got her simple. Um, but also, she had all of these like tire planters. So she she what she inherited a um, hundred acres from her father. He was the first black landowner in the county in North Carolina where I'm from. And so that's where it draws so much inspiration. You know, as a kid, it's like you run out and it's like, okay, yeah, you're just out here in this spot, a little space, outside of the city, doing these things, making mud pies and, um, you know, collecting rocks and that sort of thing. But what does that mean when you grow up and, like, you're of age and you realize, like, oh, like, you know, your great-grandfather was a landowner at a time where owning land wasn't even a thing. Like, 
that's really kind of special and what do I do with that? Like, how does that help me reckon with my memories about that place, especially in light of losing that place? Um, what do you do with all that? So there's a lot of loss here, but there's a lot of like, there's loss and then there's growth again. There's so much of the Ouroboros and the eternal return. Um, so whether it's like that sacred geometry and that like, you know, cyclicality, but how do you embrace that and like your own kind of history and your own kind of personal memory, but how do you also embrace that and just like literally shit ass every day, like just like this is part of life. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with these pieces here, is like thinking of like these safety belts, these utility belts, um, buckle up. Um, and they're also the remnants of another piece in the back there that I'll get to. Um, but I was thinking about like just how do these function as like, so they're sun dials, but how do I transform those into moon dials? I'm so much attracted to the moon and the energy of the moon and moon rituals that, yes, yeah, some rituals are a thing too, but <laughs> I'm really into moon rituals and so how do you kind of tap into that moon energy and there's a lot of like, I'll try and like charge water um, by the full moon and so then if I use that water, what does that mean? Does it mean anything? I don't know. Um, but kind of trying to like question all of that and, and view the work with all of that. I also love these shadows and like thinking about lives past and lives forgotten, um, lives that you're trying to hold on to that can't quite do that. Um, I feel like memories are ever changing. Um, so I'm kind of embracing all of that in work such as these. Um, so these are each moon dials um, that I'm embracing um, in the work. They also kind of reference dream catchers and that same idea about like, I'm going to expel that negative energy that I don't want and I'm going to embrace that, those dreams where I really just allow myself to be free or allow other people to be free that have not historically been free um, so that we can all be free. And so that's kind of where I'm at with these pieces. Um, the carabiners, same thing. It's like so much of this work is about labor and, embra and embracing craft labor in a way that's like a nod to black and brown bodies doing all of the labor, I think. Um, doing so, so, so much labor that's under-recognized, and so that's kind of like, okay, well, yeah, she, you know, made this net, or did she buy this net from, you know, the craft store? No, those nets are all made, those nets are all from ribbons and that sort of material. Um, they're from raw material, and they're all hand assembled. Um, and, and part of the work is embracing the material itself. What do ribbons mean? Like, are they about celebration? Or are they about, you know, usually they're about a good time, I think. Um, we would all agree that. Um, but how do I take those and then like push them further? Like, I'm really embracing this idea of these nets and thinking about, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the show Underground, but thinking about this casting out of this net to bring better things forth um, is kind of where these works are coming from and why they're very important to me. Um, and there's three of them. There's a lot of threes in this show. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, a lot of the work has to do with maternal grandmother. Paternal grandmother and maternal like great aunt. And so, and I've lost kind of all of them very recently, and so a lot of the work is just kind of paying on, like on its shell, all three of them. And saying, hey, organize you. 
like, I know we did all this work, we probably didn't get enough credit, we probably didn't get enough, like, like had nothing to show for it. And so, so much of the work is kind of about that, and it's about my personal kind of reckoning with that, but also just about materials and how they can really convey that, hopefully, um, to the audience. So, um, so like I said, these are moon dials instead of sun dials. Um, installations like this, I really enjoy. Um, so Carolina Gold, um, that's the name of the type of rice that I use. Um, rice has been a new material that I've been really excited about using. I've been using like dirt and like soil from different places that's like mean something. Um, I really wanted to use salt in this installation, but the salt didn't come in here, it came in somewhere else. And I really try to be responsive to the exhibitions and like kind of like in the installations and what they want and what they're asking for. And I know that sounds like really ridiculous, but I do think there's something to it. Um, like if I try something, it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. Um, but I really liked fact that the, the rice is there and I, I think the rice is what brings everything together. Um, thinking about both of my grandmothers, be it North Carolina or South Carolina, there's so much Carolina history um, and thinking about the rice fields and thinking about the cotton fields and thinking about this other field and all the stories that I um, was fortunate enough to kind of like hear them tell um, over the course of like COVID. Just like, what is this time? And they're super lonely and struggling. And I'm like, how can I do what I really cannot do from afar um, for people who mean a lot to me? So for me, that was picking up the phone and being like, hey, you know, how's it going? Um, and they're telling me these stories over and over and over. And I think it just happens quite naturally. Um, and one of those stories was, you know, the cotton fields and how one of my grandmothers was the best, you know, cotton field, uh, co cotton cleaner, cotton picker at the factory that she worked at. Um, and how she also in the field, she was the best cotton, you know, gatherer of everyone that was out there. And I was just like, that's just wild, you know, this, this mind blowing that that is something that you're telling me right now at a time where I you know, didn't really know that that was what was going to be shared with me, but also it's just like, how do I embrace that? How do I reckon with that? What do I do with that? I don't know. Um, and so this, is, I think, is my attempt to kind of reckon with all of that. Um, how do you embrace labor as kind of a positive thing? And how do you embrace labor as um, just this ritual? and allowing it to be what it is and allowing it to be sacred and allowing it to be ritual um, and how do you embrace that and how, what parts of that do you reject and what parts of that do you not acknowledge um, so I think that's what you're saying here I'm really, I am really enjoyed making the wallpaper I love pattern anybody that knows me what makes a pattern uh, <laughs> The more pattern, the better. Uh, so I really love, um, I also really love like mylar and like reflective materials because I feel like they do so much of what, you know, the artists that I really admire do. Like I really, before I knew art history and that sort of thing, I really love the, um, Hudson River School painters and how everything is so like, like the paintings are glowing. And I'm just like, how do you do that in a painting on a two dimensional surface? I don't know, because I'm a sculptor. But um, how do you do that? Um, so this is so much of embracing that, those, those traditions, but how do you also kind of like acknowledge that those traditions don't really acknowledge you, but um, in your history or your maybe like 
what you have to say, um, but also that they, you know, there's something to be had from them, or there's something to be learned from them, or something to be embraced from them. Um, meanwhile, also embracing yourself or your personal history. So I think that's where I'm at right now. It's just like, okay, Hudson River School Painters, so much beauty in it, in embracing that glowing, beautiful landscape, full of potential. Um, how do I also reckon with that being a person of color who has lost so much land or feels like my family has lost so much land um, that we've tried to hold on to but haven't been able to? Okay, but this is so important and land is so important, but what do you do? So it's kind of like that reckoning. So I think that's what so much of the work is about, is um, memorializing. So there's so many altar pots and that sort of thing. Um, I'm really interested in Greek and Roman mythology um, and the kind of ceramics that kind of come out of that. Um, but how do you put that together and then with a contemporary quilt or you know, a digitally photographed um, kind of piece of fabric or other weird materials. Um, and I really love making these little altar pieces. It's kind of like, um, I think something I'm really excited about doing. I love the altars. They, you know, I, went, I spent a lot of time in Oaxaca and Mexico, and there's just altars literally everywhere. And altars, I feel like, don't have to be like always like just. They're also a celebration. And I think a lot of the materials I'm using are celebratory, but a lot of the materials I'm using are also like, say for example, like this is the this photograph here is my hand, but then that little blue, it's hard to see, but that blue strip of photograph there is like um, my grandmother's hands when she was like in her last you know few weeks and she was like and not able to like be as free as she wanted to be, which I cannot imagine. Um, and same with the pictures of the clouds that was like my great aunt before she passed away. And it's like, I don't really know how to exist without having all of the things, you know, fully accessible to me. Um, my movement, my body, that sort of thing. Like I, so I'm like kind of embracing all of that and all of those stories here. Um, in the materials, in the fabrics themselves, while making an altar, while considering landscape, while thinking of like flag markers and, and things like candles and things like mylar and things like that, like embracing all of that while considering loss, but considering celebration. So that's kind of what's happening with. Um, you know, pieces such as this, um, and also with some of the materials and other pieces as well. Um, there's another moon dial here, um, similarly buckles and beads and that sort of thing. I really love pony beads, and I was doing a lot of work with like, like hair weave and that sort of thing as like an homage to like this time and this hair. Labor that's exerted and it's just like this everyday sort of thing, like just beauty and just the everyday. Um, and I think what I wanted to keep here was like, well, what is it like without the hair we go? And like, what is it with just the beads? Um, and I really love how reflective they are and how they work alongside the vinyl and its reflective properties. Um, I love playing with shadow. I've been playing with light before, but I think this is the first time I've kind of tried to like play with shadow properly, which is kind of tricky. Um, but I enjoyed playing with that this time, and I enjoyed like how can I like, allow these pieces to move in the way that the ways that they want to move, um, but also you know have the visual component that I wanted to have with the pieces. Um, so there's a lot of like 
power and control, but also like how much you let the thing just do what it does. And I don't really want to let it do what it does in that moment, but I gotta let it do what it does in that moment. So it's like a lot of like tension, and I think that that speaks to that same tension that's on the room, and I think that, that speaks to that same tension that's in a lot of the materials that I use, like be it the bubble. Um, so there's like this control and this release at the same time that I really love playing with. There's this chaos and there's this structure. And so much of it has to do with who I am as a person and like how I struggle with that in my own personal life, but also how it's just like a little bit of life at the same time. Um, so I'm kind of like just embracing the end work. Just like, you know. Um, I really am excited though about the pattern. I'm going to keep moving here a little bit. Um, I'm going to keep moving here to Frontier. Um, this piece I was thinking so much about, like, so, so much, all the pieces refer to landscapes in some way or another, whether it be the tires that are excavated from landscapes that, like, don't matter, or, like, historically don't matter, or, like, whether they don't matter, or whatever whatever, however you want to interpret that. Um, or whether it be like laying out the rights. And there's this, um, a lot of my thoughts around the show were about sitting and about like, what are you trying to rid yourself of and what are you trying to maintain? Um, there's an Eastern here. Um, you kind of probably know that it's like the processing of blazes. Um, what do you need to keep and what do you need to let go of? Um, so there's a lot of chemistry and things like that that I'm thinking of and just like bare minerals and bare essentials that I'm considering. Um, as well as just the natural landscape um, as well as pieces like this where I'm probably more conceptual conceptually uh, referencing a landscape. So for a tier, I'm thinking of the car hood um, that I found and was like, I must have that. And that we, you know, stuck in an empty film right now. So how do I reclaim that? How do I repurpose that thing that has literally just been discarded and left alone and forgotten about? Um, how does that then connect to these digitally you know, render photographs that then become fabric, that then become kind of wallpapery, that then are combined with like this laborious like tapestry that takes a million and a half years to make way. That's like, why did I do that? <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed playing with imagery. <laughs> I really did enjoy playing with imagery until I didn't enjoy it, um, <laughs> which was pretty early on, but. Um, I love creating this piece. I really love, I was just like, yes, this is going to good with that. That's going to good with this. And I love like piecing together these things and like this layering effect and thinking about memory as layer, but thinking about um, just so much of the everyday is in this like layer complex, like what do I make of any of this kind of experience? Um, regardless of your background, but especially if you're considering you know, black and brown folks and the landscape and like this loss with this kind of like what I make of this history that there's been or this past that there's been. And so um, that's kind of why I wanted to title this piece Frontier is thinking about this horizon, this this place of new beginning, but also this place of loss and this place of like that's forgotten. A lot of the photographs in the Photo fabrics are my hands, or like in the case of the piece back there, it's my grandmother sitting in her absolute favorite food chair. Um, the piece there is my hands, and then my grandmother's hands when she was like in her final days sitting in her little chair, her little walker. Um, and I've kind of drawn on top of those, and so what does that mean to really just embrace? 
And first the process, like how do you lose someone and just acknowledge that you're losing them, but you're okay with it when you're really, really close to them and have become really close to them over COVID. It's like, you know, I don't really know what you right now. Like, what do, what do I do? Um, so there's so much of that kind of like duality, but then also a lot of that um, just examining these smaller details as a way to kind of like micro macro look at the whole and look at the the detail as well. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at with pieces like this. I'm really thinking about labor still, this repetition, this ritual with that labor, and what does that mean to I in this present day context, embrace all of that, and then embrace the, these things that have been discarded, and literally nobody could get two cracks about because it's on the side of the room. Um, in a neighborhood that's less desirable. So, what do I do with that sort of thing? Um, and then that way, just that nod back to those nets and that nod back to those, the, the Carolinas and the nod back to this labor as a means of sustenance um, and a, a means to um, survival. And so, kind of embracing that within that context. Um, pieces such as, um, just uh, these pieces here that are netted, same thing with the two nets, like thinking about those Carolina, um, those Carolina traditions of passing out to Brave and Stewart, um, kind of making your own story. Um, how do you not only interpret or uh, embrace your own story, but then also acknowledge those in the past, and then acknowledge all that labor of the past, and then acknowledge the freedom of the present, and is it really freedom of the present? So just like reckoning with all of that, and I think that's where these pieces are. Um, my one grandmother had a pink Cadillac, and she Loved her pink Cadillac. Um, she loved driving that thing all over, from here to everywhere. Um, she's such a trailblazer, so this is kind of cool to her. Um, the other grandmother, um, this piece is devoted to her, you know, color of blue. She's the one that also in South Carolina who worked in the rice fields, worked in the cotton fields, that sort of thing. And so, Really embracing that Carolina, that hate blue tradition of kind of like spelling that thing that does not serve you or that evil or that whatever not good thing that does not serve you. And embracing what we really were able to embrace at the time. Um, she was such a woman of great strength. She's the one who this whole show is kind of like devoted to, well, off the most recently. Um, she was from South Carolina, um, but then um, passed away and lived most of her life in North Carolina. Um, and her clothes was blue. I remember her sitting in front of that little blue wallpaper in her house. And she, um, you know, just loved in, in a way that was so intense and so fierce in ways that I don't know how she could have the capacity to love in the ways that she did, considering her past and considering her abusive husband and her 11 children with an abusive husband and all the things and working with cotton and working with rice fields and I just, I, I, I don't know how she did it. So with that immense strength, like how do you, how do you just keep going? I don't, I don't know. Um, and she's the one that I, I feel like I became the closest to right before she passed away um, in July. And she is kind of a contestant of this entire show. That's the photograph right there. Um, her name is uh, Eileen Lumber Robinson. And I'm really excited that my dad's going to be able to come and see the show. And I think we're really excited to see. Um, 
So much of this show devoted to her and how much of an impact um, I feel like she's always had on me, and I feel like I've learned so much from her and grown so much. Um, and just like, how do you grow out of the space that like was not like allowed to grow? Um, and I talk to my students about that all the time. It's like there's this thing called shifting agriculture and making sure like you're shifting the things you're growing from field to field to field, therefore allowing the soil to heal. But how do you keep growing when the soil is not able to heal? Um, and that's kind of what all this is devoted to, is like, how do you keep growing and growing and growing and growing? Not only your 11 children, but then their 51 children and their own 51 children. Um, and then feeding all those 5 million children. Like, how do you do all that when the soil has not been rotated and it hasn't been it hasn't been given a break. And it hasn't been um, able to shift. And so that's kind of where um, the emphasis for, for this entire show kind of like started. Um, so all of this is kind of a homage to the three matriarchs that have meant so much to me that I've lost um, two of the three very recently, but also um, just the three of them. Recently, how do you celebrate? How do you lose? How do you embrace? How do you 